Okay, so I've been running the Amiga emulator on Raspberry Pi 4 uh, for a couple of days now, just playing around with it, just testing what games work and things, and it's excellent. Um, I've done four videos, I think, on the original Amiga. I had an Amiga 600 HD, uh, and if you want to check out, I'll put a link in the description to that content. Um, but the way you install it, you can see add remove software here, so all you do is you go to start, uh, accessories, no, preferences, add remove software, and it will come up with this. If you then do a search for FS-UAE, you will see these options. And just tick the three boxes that I've ticked, hit apply, hit OK, and that will install. Now, I couldn't get it to work before, and that was possibly because when I was going into games, uh, I had, uh, where is it, FS-UAE Arcade, I'm not sure if that was the one but uh, I couldn't get that to work properly. Uh, but under System Tools, there's FSUAE Launcher, uh, and that worked straight away first time, and uh, as soon as I put the kick ROMs in, um, which, uh, which you can apply, uh, then it starts to work. Now, if I apply a, if I go to floppy disks and I find my ROMs, or floppies, uh, which are all here, uh, so if I do these, let's do these in uh, alphabetical order. So you want to click on each one. Not sure what you do if there's more than four, but luckily for me, that hasn't really caused a problem at this point. So hit open uh, and then hit start. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller as I've been using for pretty much all of my videos. Um, and it configures fine. You didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything to it. Uh, it comes up under here. Uh, so Amiga Joystick Default Microsoft Xbox 360 and I've been using a trackpad keyboard, uh, an ordinary keyboard and a mouse and all of them have just worked fine. So let's hit start and what's nice is you get that Amiga loading sound. Uh, if I copy this and put that into terminal That will tell me the temperature, and I'm using the fan shim, uh, which is in another one of my videos, and I'll link that. Uh, so 63 degrees at the moment. We'll check that, check up with that in a minute. My fans just come on. So while my fans just come on, I'll press the scroll wheel, click up on here, hit return. Uh, oh no, hit up and return. So 58 degrees. So it's actually, <laughs> actually cooling now the fans on. So it cools it down pretty quick. Now if anybody knows how I can get that temperature to keep refreshing itself, if they can add whatever code or let me know whatever code needs to go on the end of that. I've had a look through and I've tried a few things and they didn't work. Um, but uh, yeah, so at the moment I have to click on it, press up, press return and then it will refresh. Okay, so this was, I didn't play this one back in, I thought it had gone wrong then. I didn't play this one back in the day. Um, I played um, one of the original Alien Breeds and a, and a friend and I used to play it a lot and it was really enjoyable. Oh, they're mines, are they? Ooh. And it is, it's pretty fast moving. It's, uh, it's actually, it is really good to play. Uh, and again, it was that, that thing as a two player game <laughs> and I'm dead. I really should read the instructions, but it was more to show just how well this sort of thing runs. So that's Alien Breed running. The sound works fine, the graphics work fine, everything really is impressive. And I spent quite a lot of time trying to get my old Amiga working, ended up selling it, ended up selling all the games. I've still got a load of um, floppy disks in the loft that I need to do something with, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how well it works. And if I didn't mention before, I plan to overclock, but there's no point in overclocking for the Amiga emulator because it, it really it handles it within its, uh, you know, it's no problem. It doesn't need overclocking for that. But maybe for the PSP emulator, uh, the Saturn emulator and the PlayStation 1 emulator, they all may need extra power. Oh, yes, yeah, so a lot better than playing it on the playing it on the Mega Drive. I think it was the Mega Drive. I can't remember what I was playing it on. I was playing it on another uh, console, and it's far, far better on this. And the loading times, uh, I've, I'll cut a load out in the video, but the loading times do seem very faithful to the uh, Amiga uh, and all the floppy disk sounds and everything on FSUAE is... Uh, oh, didn't think they were going to turn out. Is there a guy there as well? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, I mean, this, this, the only way to play this game is with a mouse. So just as I remembered it, graphics exactly the same. Um, you used to send people off in different groups, I seem to remember. Or is that Command and Conquer I'm thinking of? So is it, if I click on that, yeah, can I? No, how do you do it? Like that? Yeah. Oh, so now I've got, yeah, two and one, look. Not that that really helps me in this case. Oh, I'm in the water. Uh, so if I want to control this guy, I click on the top bit. I don't know how I join them back together again. So that's cannon fodder. Working brilliantly. Oh, so I'm back on the uh, Xbox controller now. If I press the start, start button, uh, you get extra menus here. Press it again. Press the select button is just pause. Um, and uh, there's only one joystick button on an Amiga. Um, so in, in the case on this uh, Xbox controller, it's just A. So my fans just come on. 57 degrees, yeah, so it ends up being, uh, it ends up cooling it down really, really quickly. And I reckon my fan, yeah, pushes pushes air onto the CPU rather than pulls it away, uh, which I'd seen a video online of an older Pi, and that seemed to be the favoured method. There is no heatsink on my, on my CPU, it's just uh, air going direct onto it. But we'll soon find out when I start to overclock it how well it copes with that. Oh, fans just come on. So, and obviously it's it's moving pretty fast, isn't it? And so it's a game where the limitation is you can only fire in the direction that you're running. You can't, oh, oh that's my friend. Uh, you can't, oh, what's that? Yeah, you can't be running back and, and firing at people. Okay. But yeah, as a two player game, obviously very enjoyable what it's meant to be and just really fast and and just really nice to play so it's a good version of Marble Madness on this uh, just a lot smoother a lot better graphics a lot quicker I'm better off to go back up there am I oh <laughs> oh ah oh. <laughs> so close so Let's close that down. Let's get something else up on there. So after Marble Madness, uh, Micro Machines. Now this version is a really good version of Micro Machines. Um, just really smooth, really good graphics. Compared to the Mega Drive version in the day, this was way, way better. The only thing you definitely notice is the loading times. They are much longer. Uh, obviously consoles are pretty much instant. But the upside was that the, the games just tended to be smoother and better graphics than uh, the consoles around at the time. Okay, so obviously the sports cars were one of the hardest ones, really fast. And uh, it was one of those ones where you had to remember the track and anticipate the corners. And also used to be really good multiplayer taking people out. Oh yeah, that was nice. Oh no, always overshoot that corner. Oh no. The controls are a bit weird on this game. They do take a bit of getting used to. It's kind of a press and hold for a certain amount of time because it's digital controls, not analog. Crikey, did some damage. <laughs> Maybe I should have had the Cinquecento. This start is a lot quicker, isn't it? Okay, so Sensible World of Soccer, uh, definitely one of the best multiplayer games of all time. If you get a room full of people in a tournament playing this, 
Uh, it just is such a good game. Some great names there in the Greek squads, Greek teams. So this is the 95-96 version. I can't remember what the differences were. I would have studied it at the time. So I'm in the white kit. Come on. Oh, I thought I had him then. Oh, terrible diving header. Whoa. Oh no, I ran straight past it. Oh, <laughs> good keeper. Oh, nearly. Oh, it's a long shot, but it missed. Oh, he saved it. Okay, so Speedball 2, another great game, another really fast game, another game that, again, was really good as multiplayer. The programmers did such a good job in making these games run so fast on such old hardware. Stunt Car Racer, various different versions of this, um, and uh, this was the best version I'd played of this, really. I don't know if it's been remade. Um, there's a good one on iOS, I can't remember what it's called now, um, but uh, similar sort of style. But this, even though it doesn't look like it's good and it doesn't look like it's playable, uh, there's just something about it. And even though the graphics are pretty terrible, and it was that whole thing about how much damage your car took uh, with the line across the top of the screen. Even if you turn too tight into a corner, it could cause some damage to your car. Come on, let's take him. But this is the this is one of the jumps that would cause you quite a lot of damage if you take it too fast. Oh that was quite good. Oh no no <laughs> More speed for this. Oh, he's gone. Is he gone? He's gone. Okay, so the last game uh, I wanted to try is actually a CD image, which is uh, Ultimate Super Skid Marks. Uh, and I've changed the system to uh, A1200 because that uh, had a higher version of graphics. And so if I hit start. Okay, so this comes up. Everything seems to be working all right. But the thing I can't access is any of the menus. I just can't, oh, I'm pressing the auto fire there. Um, I just can't get up to that part. So even if I press escape, uh, backspace, return, tab, I've just tried, I've tried pretty much everything I can think of to be able to access it. Obviously the mouse pointer in this is the part of Linux, but as soon as I click back in here, the mouse pointer disappears and, and you can see that the mouse is now controlling the, the Pong game that's there. Uh, so there must be a button you press to get into it and I've pressed every single button more than once and I still can't get it to start. So if anybody else can think of how to do that, I'd much appreciate it if you'd leave me a comment. Uh, but uh, there were loads more Amiga games that I could have put in here. Um, it's a great platform and it runs really well on the Pi 4 and my fan almost never came on. Um, it, uh, it probably came on about five times in total uh, and it would go off very quickly. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.